Okay, I was debating on a number of different topics to talk about today. There's a couple things on my mind that I think I'll get out in video form. But one of the things that I think is interesting is, you know, we have this concept that, uh, you know, there's never been a vegan culture ever to survive, uh, you know, for, for more than a generation, basically. And it's something that people often point out that veganism... Uh, is basically an experiment. You know, it's kind of funny. The vegans will point out and kind of claim that, you know, humans could not have been meat eaters because we lack, you know, sharp claws or fangs to chase down our prey and that, uh, uh, you know, uh, tool usage uh, is not appropriate. We shouldn't use tools to obtain our food. And, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting as they sit down there and suck down their smoothies uh, you know, which obviously, uh, there were, there were obviously Vitamixes, uh, you know, two million years ago where early humans, uh, could have, uh, processed their, uh, the greens and fruits and, and nut butters that they, they obtained from, you know, four different continents, you know, back then, sure. Um, you know, but it's interesting, you know, when we go back and look at evol human evolution and, you know, this presumes that you believe in evolution, I know there are a lot of people out there that, do not agree with that, but I, but I personally feel that that is a uh, fairly legitimate uh, hypothesis anyway. And so if we, we, we use that framework, it's not entirely true that uh, uh, there were no vegan humans, or, or I should say uh, uh, subhumans at least, because there actually were some. So if we look back you know, into this evol human evolution uh, there are some, some people would estimate around 7 million years ago, there was a common ancestor of which modern, you know, great apes and humans split from. And so first we think the orangutan lion came off and then the gorilla came off and then the chimpanzee came off and then finally the humans, you know, uh, diverged from that. And so as we look into what is thought to be human evolution, we go back to uh, the Australopithecines, which around 4 million years, 3 million years seem to be present. You know, we'll be familiar with uh, Lucy, who is an example of Australopithecus afarensis, discovered in eastern uh, Africa, you know, I think in the area of the Oldapai Gorge, uh, so the region that I've actually visited, and a lot of people call it uh, sort of Old Oldapai, but it's actually Oldapai, which was a mispronunciation of the way it's written, you know, in, in the... Uh, Tanzanian uh, location it refers to a type of flower that's flowering in that region uh, of the Rift Valley uh, in eastern Africa. And so as we see these Australopithecines, which uh, uh, incidentally, it's, it's thought now, uh, we know we talk about early tool usage and there's something called Oldowan technology, which is simple stone you know, flake tools and that later advanced into something later called Ashelaean technology, which probably was utilized by likely Homo erectus. But anyway, if we go back to these Australopithecines, so we see that uh, there was something called Artipithecus, which was also considered an Australopithecine, but uh, it hadn't quite developed some of the more quote-unquote human-like traits. Uh, we saw bipedalism occurred probably before we became human. Uh, there's different thoughts of advantage for that, but what's driving most of this evolutionary change was something called the Quaternary Cooling Period. And so about three million years ago, uh, the Earth cooled off dramatically, probably something like six degrees Celsius. You know, the scientists are very much worried about a one to two degree change as for global warming, but we had a period where we went through about a six degree drop in temperature. And that changed sort of the lush tropical environments that many of the primates were thriving on. You know, the, the chimpanzees, the pre hominids, uh, you know, living in the trees, getting at calories from fruit and other, other uh, vegetation, probably a small amount of insects and also probably a small amount of animal life as chimpanzees are no, known to do today. They, they'll hunt other monkeys or small deer or other animals when they can get them. And so that was going on and then this quaternary uh, cooling event occurred three million years ago and that dramatically changed the landscape. You know, again, this is over a period of thousands of years, and so we, we see the uh, forests and tropical environments becoming increasingly replaced with grassland and savanna. And so as there's less and less 
food available, uh, the creatures have to now uh, figure out how to ambulate between tree, cro tree grove to tree grove uh, initially, and so the bipedalism probably was a, an ad advantage at that point as the grasslands further ex ex uh, expanded. There were a number of attempts. Remember, there were a lot of dead-end human uh, attempts out there, and so we see some of them. And one of them, or actually two of them, there's something called uh, Australopithecus robustus or Australopithecus uh, boisei. Some people call them Paranthropus, meaning sort of outside of human. Uh, these guys made an attempt to do it the vegan way, and so they were primarily plant-based. They responded to the change in vegetation. Now they had the grasslands and the brush. So they had very robust jaws and Australopithecus or Paranthropus boisei was known as Nutcracker Man for his incredibly strong, powerful jaw. And probably because they were chewing on uh, the uh, stems and the, the sort of the woodier uh, grasses uh, to, to get nutrition, kind of, you know, kind of like what a cow might do today. And so they did that. The problem with those guys, these early human or parahuman vegans, uh, is they ended up going extinct about a million years ago, and so, or a million and a half years ago. And so we saw the attempt at veganism by primates or hominid, early pro-hominids or hominids, and it, and it failed. You know, we just don't have the, uh, we didn't have the uh, uh, necessary adaptations to do that. And so what instead sort of survived was going into the more carnivorous line. And so as the Australopithecines uh, discovered tool usage, remember tool usage actually predates uh, humans. So this is interesting. And we know that we can see other animals that use tools, certainly chimpanzees, orangutans, and other primates already use tools. We know that things like crows and dolphins and octopus uh, will all use tools. So tool usage is not uniquely human. And we do know that stone tools even predated this Oldowan technology. And there's another type, and I'm blanking on the names. Maybe some of you guys can fill us in. But we think that the Australopithecines use that. And then Homo habilis, who many people designate as the first true human, although that is even still debated. Some people still think that Homo habilis was a Australopithecine. But clearly there was a, there was a, a gradual shift into more humanism as the brain grew, as we became better at using tools, and clearly the tools were used not as Vitamixes or blenders, but to uh, butcher animals, and so probably started out scavenging animals. Uh, that is probably a likely scenario, and so we have these Australopithecines, later Homo habilis, following maybe big predator cats that, that uh, you know, as they come upon their kill, they would leave uh, a lot of uh, meat behind, some, some would estimate 10 to 20 kilos if we look at uh, what a modern lion will leave on, say, a zebra carcass. And so these animals would have had access to meat. Probably it was, uh, you know, the, the hindquarters, the muscle meat, and then they would eventually figure out how to crack the bones to obtain some of the marrow. They might pr crack the skulls to get some of the brains to hit some of their fat requirements. Um, so as we have this scavenging go on, uh, with Homo habilis and Australopithecines, eventually we get into Homo erectus. Now, Homo erectus is now reaching near modern human height. Some people estimate some of them stood as tall as six feet, uh, whereas the Australopithecines, like Lucy, were about three foot six. And so we see, generally, as a population gets a greater, uh, more nutritious diet, they become taller. And so this is one of the things we see. We see uh, increased brain capacity, brain growth. You know, we went from a 400 cc brain with uh, Australopithecus and chimpanzees all the way up to about a 900 cc. Maybe some people even estimate up to maybe possibly 1100 cc's with Homo erectus. Homo erectus became very efficient at hunting. Uh, they developed spear technology. Uh, they likely included uh, possibly stone tips on their spear. It's possible they did that. Uh, they were very proficient at hunting megafaunal animals like elephants, mammoths, and mastodons. And they ranged out of Africa somewhere maybe around a million and a half years ago as they left trans transitioning across Eurasia and into, your, into, into Asia. So we find some of the early Homo erectus fossils in Asia dating back to you know a million years plus and things like Java Man and 
Peking man are examples of some of those. And the Homo erectus fossils have been found all over Europe and Asia and the Middle East. And so, and in, even into Africa. And some people call it Homo egaster, uh, maybe the African version of Homo erectus. And eventually, Homo erectus likely transitioned into something called Homo heidelbergensis. These things, apparently, you know, again, there's a lot of interbreeding and migrating in and out of Africa that is occurring and, and a lot of crossbreeding, obviously. So eventually those were thought to have led to the Neanderthal or Homo neanderthalensis and eventually the modern Homo sapien. And somewhere in there, Homo erectus probably evolved into the uh, Denisovans and then possibly even Homo flores, which is called the Hobbit Man, which was found on the island, uh, the Flores Island out in Indonesia. And so eventually uh, the uh, Denisovans possibly uh, intermixed with Homo sapien, and then they ended up uh, migrating out to Australia, becoming the first aboriginals. And so Homo sapiens and Neanderthals lived uh, together in Europe for an overlapping time of tens of thousands of years. The last Neanderthal is thought to have went extinct maybe 40,000 years ago. There's some evidence they may have been around as late as 25,000 years ago, uh, based on evidence in a cave in Spain. Um, the uh, Homo erectus probably passed on at around 140,000 years ago. And so we had this period of time where we had humans that were hunters, meat eaters. They developed the tools. We had a attempt at a plant-based hominid, you know, after the uh, uh, quaternary extinction, or sorry, quaternary cooling period, which did not last. And so we've seen the vegan attempt. It's a failure. The fact that we have processed food and we have tools that can grind up our plants allows us to do some of those things, allows modern Homo sapiens to uh, not die. You know, they can get sufficient calories uh, because of that, but that's not how we evolve. It's not who we are. Uh, ultimately, it leads into uh, many uh, problems with health deficiencies, and that's why we see so many problems with veganism. Uh, we'll continue to do that. Um, so anyway, this is just a little bit of a review of evolution uh, with a general outline. There's obviously contention about what exactly happened, but that's generally how many people think it went and played out. Uh, so we are a meat-eating species. We evolved uh, because of tool usage. We evolved because of meat-eating. That's who we are, and that's who we'll continue to be. We will not change our biology over the next 50 years by feeding everybody fake meat products and plant-based, uh, you know, highly processed food, which is what is being attempted to do to us. So anyway, keep that in mind. Remember who you are as a species. We're not going to change that. We do need to continue to work on uh, making agriculture efficient, sustainable, uh, and as humane as possible. But we, we do not and cannot get away from that. We cannot get away from who we are. We cannot escape our biology. That only leads to illness, sickness, mental disease, and frustration. Okay, guys, enjoy being human. Enjoy eating meat. Embrace it. Celebrate that. Do not, for one second, allow someone to guilt you uh, into thinking there's something wrong with, with uh, who you are as a person, as a human being. Uh, that's who we'll always be, and we need to remember that, and we need to fight back with everything we have, just as much as we had to fight to kill the first mammoth. Uh, we need to fight for who we are as a species and not let someone try to take that away from us. Okay? All right. Take care, guys. Like, subscribe. Leave your comments down below. Uh, anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Take care.